Here we go. We're in. Again. Back again. Yeah. Done a mic. We're here. So to help you. With your fitness business content. Well, that's it. Because that's what we're going to do today. Content. Content. Like content. Yeah. I'm just going to put this in there. I've just been told. <sighs> I'm going to cut it out. So it's fine. Don't cut it out. <laughs> just been told a lot massive. So that's yeah. fine. Meant, By meant, shout out to Marwan. Uh, he, meant, he meant fat, I think. No, he said massive. Yeah. He said, oh, I can tell he competes. Um, it was a long time ago. Should have saw me four years ago. Yeah. Um, that's why his cars are so big now. He has to carry around all that extra Carrying weight. around, yeah. Yeah. He's... What is essentially a collapsed shed of a <laughs> uh, these days. But, yeah. yeah. Anyway, enough about that. It's boring. Um, Content, is it? Today, we're going to talk a little bit about... So, we've had this discussion in our group uh, three weeks ago, four weeks ago, something like we've that. Got a, we've got a group, haven't we? We have got a group. I haven't we talked about it, have we, really? Last, last three no, episodes. we've not plugged it. Should we start with the... Pl- or do all the plugging and stuff first? Because we leave it too late. And everyone's gone by then. Like it, like this video and stuff, whatever we'll you need do to do that. with it. Was it Everything share you need it? To do. Share uh, it. Hit, what is it? Hit subscribe. Yeah, put the link in your Instagram story, do everything. All we right. need all the help we can get with this. All so, right. um, yeah, it was, a, it was a topic we touched on in our £49 a month members group, um, there you go. which you can join. Links, links below. Links below if you want to join and, and upskill, level up as a, an online coach. You have Always to. level up yeah. as an online coach. Um, you got to be. Uh, and, you know, I suppose a little bit of what we're going to talk about on another video maybe next time be about you know if you want to fill some time during your day because you don't actually have a lot on then go join the group and watch the videos there you go because it'll be good for you um so we touched on this topic like i said in our group and we were saying how if you have less than not even have less than that less than 30 clients let's say you need to see yourself as a content creator not a coach and even beyond that you're still a content creator but at that point you can probably invest some money into other things and you can probably look at maintaining your content rather than trying to improve it all the time. But essentially it's lost on a lot of coaches that they are actually just content creators Yeah, and that they worry a lot about their leads coming in or they worry about getting their name out there, growing a following, but they're not prepared to put the work into their content. Um, as an online coach, it is kind of essential that you are online and that you're on social media and that you have a presence and that your content is looking very, very good, and very, very sharp and speaks to a very specific type of person. Otherwise, you will not be able to do the coach part of your job. Yeah, it's um, it's it's easy to have this like romantic kind of dream of, oh, I'm going to be a coach, I'm going to help people with fitness, I'm going to get people in shape, I'm going to be able to post loads of transformations and stuff like that. Um, it's easy to think that that's going to happen. And there's a lot of investment in courses and I've done this qualification and been on this fucking webinar or seminar or whatever. Um, When in reality, you have have to be coaching people to be a good coach. It doesn't necessarily matter um, what you know or what you think you know. There's there's no replica for uh, the actual experience of coaching, um, coaching real people through real situations um, in real time. So actually, um, as good as as good as a coach as you think you are, you don't actually know whether you're that good until you've been coaching a significant amount of people for a period of time. So then you kind of go, well, to be able to get in people um, to coach, you then have to probably pay more, no, not probably, definitely pay more attention to marketing than you actually do coaching, especially in the beginning. And marketing is essentially social media for most coaches. Um and I think if you replaced if you replaced anything with online coaching, if you replace the online co- if you replace the coaching element and went um you're now selling pens um and then put that into perspective and go, okay, well, your job is to now sell these pens, they would probably start to make some content around selling the pens, but the pen could quite easily be swapped out for online coaching it's the same thing Mm. you can't rely on you can't you can't rely on your coaching being the thing that sells you because they've not experienced the coaching yet you need to rely on the fact that you're able to connect with people you've got to rely on the fact that you can demonstrate that you can get them a result with people you've got to um they've got to like you You've got to provide them the the means and the opportunity to sign up, show that you've got space available and how to contact you and what the experience is going to be like and how you're going to feel after it's done and what the consequences are of not uh, of, of them not starting. Those are the things that you need to convey to be able to then coach effectively. And it's just baffling to me that 
people don't want to do the content create bit. I think it's the biggest shock that one to one PTs get when they go online yeah. is that they they have no concept of content and, and what's required. Um, the people that I do see, you hear this all the time. Oh, I'm just going to post a few bits of content on Instagram. Hopefully, get a few clients. And then the content is like a motivational video mm. or what they think is a motivational video, but it's not. It's, you know, they'll hire a videographer to film a one minute kind of like promo. Mm. Waste of fucking time. Brilliant. Well done. Mm. Um, or, you know, just post motivational quotes mm. or things like that. And, and they have this big shock when they realize that you have to connect with these people. Because what you, you do one to one as a PT is you connect with people all the time. With your clients, you're connecting with them, you know, but it's also a bit easier to get clients through the door because they've seen your face a little bit more when, you know, if they remember the gym and they kind of maybe done one of your classes, they've had that interaction with you. But people online haven't had anywhere near the same level of minutes of interaction. Like if you looked at it as a minutes point of view, if you have an hour gym class that someone's interacting with you in that, let's call that 60 minutes of interaction with you. That's the same as them effectively watching 60 one minute reels of you right and let's say they spent you know, they might spend some time watching your stories as well but to put it into context that might be how long it takes someone to sign up for, or to even show an interest in online coaching with mm -hmm. you and they just don't have this concept of your content is you turn up to a gym class it's you putting on a gym class it's you talking to people on gym floor um and and it just baffles me the amount of, of the your, amount of effort they put into it and what they expect out of it your content isn't it <clears throat> your content as a one-to-one -one PT is literally just being in the gym. Exactly. Like one-to-one -one PTs find it easier to pick up clients because you're in an environment with other people training. People are already there training. So you can say- They already want to be in the gym. They yeah, already are yeah. in the gym. They're already interested in fitness and getting in shape. Secondly, you've got fucking coach written on the back of you. And thirdly, they're probably witnessing you coaching somebody in the gym at a certain period of time. Mm -hmm. So everything that you're doing when you go into your eight hours at work in the gym is content creation yep. because it's getting niche eyes on you as a coach and mm -hmm. showing social proof. Yep. It's all the things we tell coaches do to do online. online, but they don't. Yeah, right. It's, and they don't see that. They don't see that as, like you said, when they, when someone in the gym is watching you coach someone in person, that's you posting a video testimonial, a transformation, a behind the scenes on your story of your check-ins, right? Mm -hmm. Only you're doing it for what? Five seconds, mm -hmm. if that. They're doing it for a whole hour you're watching them. So again, the, the, the speed at which someone is more likely to turn up with you is quicker in person than online again, because the exposure they have, again, they're not being distracted by all the other shit on Instagram at the same time. So you have to do more online, even more than you think. Mm -hmm. Like we're just saying there, doing like one transformation, one thing. It's going to take you loads more than that to get anywhere near the same level of respect or connection with someone in, in the gym mm -hmm. for them to walk over to you and go, I want some PT. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. coaches need to understand that their primary job when they become an online coach is a content creator. Mm -hmm. They should be spending, you should be spending more time creating content than coaching clients. Mm -hmm. If you're not, you're doing something drastically wrong. That's how you're going to grow your business. That's how you, like, if you've got six or seven clients, <clears throat> you've got fucking tons of time there. Like, let's be honest. Well, that's three hours of the week. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so you should be creating the content that allows that connection to the audience that builds up the know, like, and trust. And you need to be putting it out consistent, 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 so that that time that Dan's talking about there, that time reduces because you've condensed the amount of of information and value or entertainment or, you know, thought-provoking into, into a smaller window. You've sped up the process. If you're posting seven to ten times a week, that's you're going to build up that equity quicker than posting two times a week, three times a week. Mm -hmm. Of course you are. It's going to take you fucking infinitely longer if ever, if you ever build up the momentum just posting two or three times a week. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, coaches don't want to do it. They want to be an online coach because, oh, I want the freedom. I want to be able to work from my laps laptop. Uh, I, you know, I, I want, you know, it's, it's more leverageable in terms of money. So you want, you want all of that part, <clears throat> but I just don't really like the content stuff. Don't really know what to say. I'm not very good on camera. Okay, well, here's a fucking like wake up call. Just be a coach. Then. Like, just be a, just be a coach yeah. then. Be a coach. Oh, but I don't want to spend all my hours on the gym floor. Well, you're going to have to do something you don't like then, aren't you? You're either spending all your hours on the yep. gym floor or you're spending all the hours doing doing your fucking content. It's one or the other. Yep. So you pick which one. Those hours on the gym floor should be now spent doing content creation. Correct. Correct. And that's the thing that baffles me. So we, we've had one of the guys who, who we work with, he's, um, he's gone done quite well on social media recently. Um, 
And not only has he spent years refining the way he, he does things, and we talked about this within the group, but when we told the group, everyone's like, oh, what's he doing to, to do so well? How's he, how's he managed to do, you know, grow so quickly? Or how's he managed to do all this sort of stuff, right? And then when you explain to them that, do it, that he was doing 15 to 20 hours a week on content, they all, you could see that they're all like, oh. And you go, well, how many hours are you doing a week on content? Well, I'll just make it up on a spot 10 minutes before I post it. Mm-hmm. Hmm. where do you think the problem is then? Hmm. And they don't get it. People don't see it. They see all these people who do really, they're great content. Whether you follow comedians with hundreds of thousands of followers, they see all these skits and they, they, it's a 30 second reel on a skit. Probably took 30 hours of filming for 30 second reel, like that to be done to that level, edited that well, you know, all that sort of stuff. People don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear the level of detail that goes into it because as we've explained on a previous video, in that you have to, just work hard and you have to just create the content to find out what works, what doesn't work is that people think that they're just going to stumble across this like way of doing it and go, oh, that's, that's it. That's, that's the perfect way. And then from day one, from post one, they're going to have it all sorted out. And the fact is the people that are doing really, really well have made thousands of crap videos, thousands of crap posts, thousands of crap emails before they land on mm-hmm. their, their way of doing things. But regardless, they're still putting more hours into it. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know how, I don't know what people are expecting the answer to be on that. Do you know when you people think, oh, it, it, I, I, again, you then replicate it to like movies and things like that as well. And I go, do you know how lot, how much footage they have to film to get two hours of a movie? Like I don't, Again, I don't think they quite, people get what it takes to film a 30 second movie. They think it's just a case of turning camera and watch, let's say, maybe plan it before you film. Maybe that'd be a good idea. But they don't get that concept. No. They don't understand it. It baffles but they me. don't. They don't want to understand it either. Like I find that sometimes coaches just um, they 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 find the they find the content creation a chore. I think that's probably one of the the, the problems is that they find it a chore. Um, and it, I I I think it stems from lack of creativity is one. Maybe not knowing their niche. Maybe thinking that they need to post in a specific way. And I think it it comes from not knowing what what content they want to post so they they just don't they just don't do it unfortunately you can't get by like that you've got to you've got to find the thing that you do enjoy so like when me and dan were and again i always go back to like when we were coaching maybe like fat loss and nutrition and stuff um like the content creation was the fun part like Mm -hmm. and it showed it was the can't wait to get in camera can't wait to take the mic can't wait to have a little bit of a laugh have a bit of a banter and then when we started youtube walking around doing stuff making content that we enjoyed like it, it, it's because we enjoyed it is why we did it and why we did it so well and so um effectively i guess it's just with coaches it's i can just see that there's just this like friction and i do think it stems from them not knowing what they should be putting out um not being it's it's being afraid to to speak your mind speak your mind they're so worried about being judged yeah they're so worried about and maybe because they're judgmental themselves but they're so worried about what they put out and what someone might say and i and i had i did a video on this today on my instagram i was like yeah but you want people to judge you mm-hmm. they have to judge you to want to work with you mm-hmm. it's like we talk about the favorite um ice cream all the time no one says vanilla mm. it's it's like, yeah, you'll eat it. It's not offensive, but it's no one's favorite ice cream. Mm-hmm. And it's the same thing of like, well, you have to want people to judge you. You have to be a bit out there mm-hmm. so that you get people to like you enough to go, yeah, some money. Mm-hmm. I want you to work with me. And it, 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 that's what it comes down to. And, and it's that fear of being judged. But what they don't understand is as a one-to-one PT, they're being judged. Mm-hmm. Every single day, they're being judged by people. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, and it, it's that, it comes back to that same argument again of like, you said there, but you're going to have to do something you don't like doing or you don't want to do. How many times do coaches say to their clients, the client might go, oh, this tracking's a bit of a ball ache, isn't it? Well, well yeah, but you've got to do it though. Get yeah. results. Yeah. And, and there's so many these analogies we can turn around and be like onto coaches. Well, yeah, like mm. that's, that's your problem. That's you. And one of the things that we used to really, the reason we used to enjoy content so much is that we used to, we used to plan it is that we used to, we used to be like, oh, I can't wait to film this later. I can't wait mm-hmm. to film this tomorrow. The day after we'd be writing it out on notes on our phone, what we're going to do, how it's going to look, mm-hmm. what sort of scenes we can do, what things, you know, coaches aren't planning any of this stuff because mm-hmm. they're not excited about it. They're not excited about putting their voice out. They're not excited about telling the world their views. Like we are doing here on YouTube. We just, put our views out into the world. Mm-hmm. Some people like it, some people will hate it. That's fine. We'll get mocked by some people, we'll get lauded by some people, we'll get loved by others. Great. That's the whole point of doing it. You look at you look at these comedy profiles on Instagram, like Four Brothers and Cole Anderson and stuff. They're all they're all planned. 
Like the scenes are planned, the jokes are written, they're all planned, there's effort gone into it. And that's why they go so well, to the point where brands use them to advertise their product and they make a joke about it, they make a video about it. You see Four Brothers mm -hmm. do fucking, you know, advertising this and advertising that and advertising that because they're getting over what they want to convey in their particular way. And that's the way that you go about it. You, you make the content that you want to make in the voice that you want to make it and have complete, complete, complete kind of control over that. Try to be blinkered. I would say try to be blinkered from other coaches, what other coaches might think, because they're not going to buy from you. They're not your target market anyway. And just say the things that you need to say to the types of people that you want to and have fun with it. Have a laugh with it. It will come across better. Um, and also know that your first 100 videos are going to be shit. Like, and be okay with Do that. You know, like, it's just, it's, it's because it, it's mad. It's because somebody will go, on the amount of times, honestly, that I'll have this. Yeah, so I posted a video on that this week and it didn't go so well, so I'm going to try something different. And, you know, I, I noticed that that one only got four likes, so I'm going to, and it's like, oh my God, like, take the likes off, take the views off, take everything off. Literally go, did I enjoy making the video? Is it niche related? Is it in my voice? And it, is it somewhat entertaining or thought provoking or whatever? Okay, then that those are the metrics you need to worry about. Don't worry about it. On to the next one. On to the next one. On to the next one. And forget about going. It's this analysis of oh that one oh, didn't go so well. What do you like mean it, it didn't go so like well? It's like it's a fucking exam. It's like they're in A levels again and they've got six exams and they have to pass each one to pass the end of the, the, the whole year or whatever. It's like they've got modules. And I'm like no, just make more. Like just do more. Like why does it matter if it was shit? Why does it matter if it failed? Like what do you mean failed? Well, I didn't get as many likes as I wanted. Well, then you, then you were wrong with your target. <laughs> like, the, that's not the target. The goal isn't to put it out and get likes. The goal is to put it out because it's the right thing to put out for you. And like you say, you keep going. You put out another one. You put out another one. It's like there's this failure. I don't but get it. it. That, like they're that, doing an exam. But that's the reason why people struggle to put out content is because they're, anal oh, they're analyzing stuff on such a, on a minute level and going, well, this one didn't go as well as that one. So I'm going to do that. And it's, they're looking at the wrong stuff and they're chasing the tail. Like it's, it's weird. It, it, it doesn't cross my mind. Like, I don't know what views I'll get, uh, what we I'll get. I don't, I don't know. I literally do not know. I don't know what fucking likes or comments I've got on my last X amount of posts. I have not got a clue because it doesn't make a blind bit of difference to me. Like, at all. It doesn't matter. And I wish coaches could do that and not have the notifications bit of seeing the amount of likes or yeah. whatever. I just wish you could just put what you want to say out in the world and that's it. Job done. Mm -hmm. That's the way that you should go about it. Like genuinely. But because the amount of times, honestly, where it's like, uh, yeah, well, this one didn't go so well and no one reacted to that. Stop expecting it. Yeah. Stop expecting it. Well, likewise, I've seen really shit videos get loads of likes. Just like, literally post every day. And I'm not joking. Post every day for a year. Your content will look better. It will hit better. You will have got some clients from it. You'll be in a much better position. But you won't. Nah, not every day for a year, surely. Yeah. Not every day for a yeah, year, yeah. surely. It's mad, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it does work like that, though. It's, I often do see dragon, people turn up at Dragon's Den and go, yeah. So I'm, I'm, in, um, I'm in week three. And uh, yeah, I, yeah, we're about a million pounds at the moment. It doesn't happen, does yeah. it? It's usually year three. Yeah, we've made negative 125,000 year one, negative 96 year two, negative 63 year three. But we're on to make about 14 grand profit this year in year four. That's and all the dragons there going, yeah, good work. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah okay, good yeah. work. <laughs> yeah, that's what it looks like. But this, no, no, no. Oh, yeah. I've made three posts this week and oh, no one's come in, so that didn't work. I need to do something different. Oh, my God. Yeah. There's just no, um, there's just no um, semblance of being a business or what? being like having clarity, a vision or direction of where things want to go and who you want to serve and how you're going to get there. There's no clarity of it. It's so knee-jerk reactionary. Maybe I should post it. Mm. Fucking, maybe I should post some more reels about how to make a chicken fajita. Get a grip. Get a fucking grip. Yeah. Um, don't, honestly, do not expect to have a good coaching business going and posting about chicken fajitas and chicken burrito bowls and steak sandwich in three minutes. Like it's like that video that you saw. It's like what are online coaches doing? Going, fucking stop Brilliant. what you're doing and look at this um, egg McMuffin. It's basically an egg, um, a sausage, and a low calorie bagel thing. Like yeah, 
It's brilliant. What? Yeah, and and do you know what? I, I we always do this. We always come back to analogies for for coaches. It's like we go back to that client who wants to 100 kilo back squat and they do a back squat at 20 kilos and they go, I'm not 100 kilo yet. So I think I should do Bulgarian split squats instead mm. with 10 kilo each side. Like it's, it's that, it's that. And then the next week, oh, I'm not 100 kilo yet. So probably we'll do goblet squat this week. Mm. Oh, I'm not there yet. So maybe I should just, just skip legs altogether. Mm. <laughs> like, and it, and it, 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 you say it like that and it go, well, don't be so stupid. But that's exactly the same thing that mm -hmm. coaches are doing. They, they are just changing everything and rather than sticking at it. And, and it's one of the biggest bugbears we have is telling coaches the same thing over and over again. It's, we've done it with fat loss clients. It's exactly you the same. Say? You, said, you said something that was quite good for once. So that's why it's stuck in my mind. I think you said something along the lines of, um, it, it was like an analogy of being successful in business, but you were like, what you're trying to do is trying to win Mr. Olympia, but you're training from home. Like, yeah. do you think you're going to win Mr. Olympia training at home with, with bands and a set of pink dumbbells. No. Well, that's what you're doing in your fitness business. Yeah, there's like, tools for the job. And you, it's like, you need to figure out where you're at with it all. And yeah. it's kind of like, okay, if you're if you're training at home with bands and with weights, you're going to get to a certain point. But then at a certain point, you need to then up, upgrade things. Mm -hmm. and you need to start looking at things differently. Like again, whether it's lighting, whether it's sound, whether it's content creation, stuff like that. And again, it's the same with, I made the point the other day on my stories that if you're a coach and you are editing all your content on your phone, stop edit your content on a computer because all the best content creators edit videos, photos, whatever it is on their computers. They do, all do that. I don't want to do it on a computer. I want to do it on my phone. Yeah, exactly. Because you're lazy. Most people, lazy, coaches are lazy, right? They don't want to have to invest in it. They don't have to think about it. So again, I talked about, so I use Final Cut Pro, which is, you know, 300 quid or something too like expensive. that. It's too expensive for some people, but they'll pay 11 pound a month for an app on their phone. Well, if you had Final Cut Pro and you used it for three years, it would pay you be worth you, you'd save money effectively. Yeah, I don't know if now though. And I've had it, and I've had that for seven years now, Final Cut Pro, and I've learned how to use it. You know all that sort of stuff, and it comes back to that whole point. That's what I said about the um, training from home thing that you said. It's like if you want to compete with James Smith, well, he edits majority of his stuff on a computer. I can see that he does. I can tell that he does. Well, someone else would use it for him, maybe now. I don't know. Um, and, and yet everyone's so obsessed with doing it because I've had it from clients on their check-ins. This is why it came up. Oh yeah, I can't really get the clips together well enough on my phone, my finger and moving there and you can't really see where the clips are moving around. I'm like, well, straight away, stop doing it on your phone then. Do it on your computer because that's what a professional would do. Hmm. A professional content creator would get their computer out. It's the same thing. If you're training for this Olympia, you don't train from home. Mm -hmm. You go to a gym. You pay your gym membership, probably a higher gym than... And again, it all comes down to where do you want to be? Okay, well, if you don't want to be a good online coach, then don't do it on your laptop, do it on your phone. See where you get to, see what you can create, that's fine. But there are limits to where that's gonna get you. Then the next jump is to then learn to do it on your computer or work with someone else who does it for you, right? That's the other, the other thing. Or you earn enough money, you pay someone to do it for you. You pay someone to film it and set the lighting up and all that sort of stuff, right? Which is the next level up in expense. But it's, coaches are not doing themselves any favors by having this scarcity mindset of, well, I can't spend 300 quid on software. Well, I'll tell you what, if you did spend 300 quid on it, you would fucking learn how to use it. They'll go and spend six quid on a coffee, though, to work from a coffee shop. Coffee shop, like though, to hard. look yeah. like they're working hard. Yeah. Save all those. That's, that's what they'll do, yeah. Save those up, yeah. And yeah. you will know, buy a monster for, for three quid from the, and a, and a protein bar from the gym they're going to about to train at yeah. for six quid. Yeah, they'll do that. And exactly, exactly that. It comes back to this, and they'll buy the supplements. Yeah, yeah. So it's pre-workout, doesn't really do anything, mate. Just like, you know, you, you've made content about that, but you're still taking one. Yeah. Um, but yet won't invest in, like you said, learning to be a better content creator. People don't see it as thing. a business though. No. They see themselves as, I go to the gym. It's a hobby. Yeah, it's a hobby yeah. for a lot of people. And people who get to the highest level, it's not a hobby, is it? No. If you want 30 clients, it's not a hobby. It's not a side hustle. It's a job. Um, and the quicker you treat it as a job and the quicker you treat it for what it is, which is you are a content creator first and foremost, every day you wake up before you do your client stuff, you need to think about, why well, am I a content creator? Because by the time you get to have enough clients where you've got 30, 40, 50 clients, you can post ir more irregularly because you've actually got work to do. But guess what also happens when you get to that point of 30, 40, 50 clients is that because you know that you were a good content creator to get those clients, you keep that up. Mm. Funny that. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's all we've got for you today. On that. I think that's it, isn't it? Yeah, you are a content creator. Yeah. Act like one. You may just find you have a better business. There you go. Like it and stuff. Cheers. Share it. <laughs>